Hey, today is Monday, September 23rd, and I got an offer from uh, DoorDash for $6.50 to drive 3.4 miles, and the time is currently 8.05 a.m. All right, well, I went inside and I got the order and it was ready, so I didn't have to wait at all, which was excellent. And uh, for a Monday, it's pretty normal right now. Um, I started my days now at about 8 o'clock, so the traffic isn't too bad since I'm skipping all of the uh, traffic for school. And I'm going to be driving uh, six minutes from here, 2.3 miles. Uh, the instructions say, hand it to me. Please text when you arrive and do not ring the doorbell. I feel like I've been to this place before. I think this is the house where there's a lady with really long nails and she scratched my hand one time. <laughs> so I hopefully she has trimmed her nails back a little bit or I'll just make sh sure to stay clear of the nails and really just sort of put my hands underneath the bag so I don't have to deal with that type of awkward situation. And um, yeah, and so I've been gone for a while. Uh, I took time off because I wasn't feeling well. I needed a, what would you call it? A mental health break. So I took some time to myself to just kind of you know do my own thing and then I had all kinds of other stuff going around, uh, going on at home so I was like you know what my plate is full so I don't need to be dealing with making videos right now so especially because it's not the uh, it's not the recording of the videos that is the difficult part it's the sitting at the computer and uh, spending the time to edit I think that is what is the pain point for me as far as making my videos so I'm gonna try to make my videos with less editing involved so if this video seems like um, it's a little bit different from the other ones it's not your imagination it's because I'm trying to I have to figure out a way to make it where I can just upload the videos on um, the video files and then just render and do as very little uh, spend as very spend as little time as possible um, making cuts into the video because that's really where the time gets eaten up so I'm, I was just thinking to myself well the parts of the things that the parts of the video that take the longest usually is if I have to figure out like well is there copyright music playing in the background of the videos so if there's if there is um, a situation that I'm gonna go into I have to first I'm gonna first just figure out well is there music playing in the environment that I'm in and if there is I'm just not gonna record and um, if there is, uh, if the course, if they're not, if there's no music, then I'll just go ahead and start recording. But I'm not going to waste my time um, making content where I'm going to have to spend a lot of time, you know, in the production process because I just don't have the time. And if I, if I have to do that, then I'm just not going to make the videos. I think that's that's just the bottom line because I don't have that kind of um, that kind of free time to do it. Boy, all the kids are still going to school right now in this area. So that that's sort of what the basic strategy is. And then hopefully it all just works out and you guys are still entertained by uh, <laughs> by the videos, but uh, you know, or just fast forward. You'll just you can just be like, oh, this is too dull, or I'm gonna watch something else. So you guys just do what you want to do, but. This is kind of the format I think I'm going to stick with for right now and, and just see what happens. So the drop off I'm going to record uh, as long as my hands aren't too full. I kind of hurt my shoulder the last time I was trying to record and carry a lot of heavy things. So I had that problem. So I don't want to be dealing with that, with those issues. You're there first, guy. It's your turn. Go ahead.
Let's see, is it here that I turn? No. There's one more to go. And uh, let's see, I just got one Starbucks bag to drop off, so it shouldn't be too much of, a, of an issue to deal with that. And the weather's nice today. It's 77 degrees, so the weather's real nice right now. Not a cloud in the sky. We got blue skies. And um, I think that's it. I'm also I was also thinking about how I'm just tired of reaching for the camera to turn it on and off. So it'll have a little bit. Oh, that guy thought I was waving at him. <laughs> so so uh, I'm gonna just have it just rolling. And so there might be a lot of long pauses where I'm not saying anything, but the camera's going. All right, making a left. I'm in the neighborhood. And yep, this is the house with the lady with the long nails. I think they were like a, the last time I saw her nails, I think they were like a turquoise blue. <laughs> See how traumatized I was by it? I was so irritated by it too that it's stuck in my mind, it's stuck in my craw, let's see, it's this house coming up here on the left, uh-huh, yeah, this is it, all right, this is her house, all right, I'll try to get the nails in the shot if I can, all right, we have arrived. Hello. Hey. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. Well, that was it for that drop off. Nothing went bad. She she promptly showed up to the door. DoorDash calling. Eleven dollars twenty five cents. For 8.1 miles, that's a no. Mm, there's kids coming here at the stop sign. I wonder if I should make a left. I'll probably make a left-hand turn. Just to get away from these rotten kids. Or actually, it looks like they're done crossing. So I guess I'll just go this way. Yeah, I guess I'll just go this way. Oh, God, I hate when all the kids are out. <laughs> It's like, come on, people, get to school already. All right, well, now I'm just waiting. Yup, it's Monday. I don't like buses. DoorDash, $6.25, 5.1 miles. Nope. I'm going to be here probably for about five minutes. As the kids all have to walk on the bus. Oh, wave goodbye, everyone. See you later. Have a great day in school, kids. Time is 8.44 a.m. And I got an offer from Uber Eats. It's a trip radar. And I'm going back to the same Starbucks that I was just at. And I'm going to be getting uh, $5.00. For 2.4 miles. Yeah, I got the order and it was ready. I didn't have to wait at all for it. Uh, where are we going? Four minutes, 1.1 miles. It's a business. Leave it with front desk and then ask for the customer. That is all. I don't know. Um, I don't know how long I'm going to work until today. I'm, I have my schedule on DoorDash to go until 2 p.m. And I'm going to try to go until that time. Uh, I'll try to push myself to go until that time. And I've already had a big breakfast. I had some uh, toast with jam. And I had a cheese stick, a banana, and I think that's it. Then I just had some water. So I am fueled up so I don't feel hungry or anything like that. But um, 
I'm really into watching this t- this series called From. Uh, right now it's on Amazon Prime, but I think it originally it was on MGM Plus or something like that. So it's kind of like a Walking Dead, but of course it has more of a twist because it's not exactly like Walking Dead. But if you're like scary s- scary shows that are like a series. I recommend watching it because it's good. So far, I'm only on episode four. So, but so far, it's been very interesting. They're developing, of course, all the characters and the mystery, and so it's it's uh it's still holding my interest. And uh, I guess the the creators are the same people Turn right that on West Horizon Ridge Parkway. They're the same people that made the TV show Lost. So. It, it, it has that feeling like I'm watching Lost if you're old enough to ha- remember watching Lost. <laughs> because Lost was a long time ago. It was like over 20-something years ago. Are you going or no? Come on, girl. I'm just waiting for you. I know. You can give attitude to people, like, to your um, customers inside your business. But don't, don't throw your shade at me just because I'm letting you cross the frickin' street. <laughs> oh, there's so many crazy people in the world. So anyway, yeah, so that show I turn recommend left, watching. Then turn left. It's good. It is a good show to watch. It's very entertaining and it has a lot of gore in it and um a lot of mystery. Where do I park for this place? I can never turn remember. Left, then drop off on the left. Do I park here or over there? Let's see. I guess I'll park over here. Of course, I always pick the wrong spot. Let's see if there's any parking. Uh, Oh, there's one spot right here. Let me turn it. Okay. All right, gang. Let's go drop off uh, some Starbucks. Howdy, y'all. I got another offer here that just came in, and it's from DoorDash. We're going to be heading on over to Starbucks, our favorite place to get money. $5 for 2.6 miles. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Now, for this particular order, I had to wait a little bit for it. And there was some other girl with the exact same name as my customer. So when they announced the name of the order, both of us went up to the counter and were like, Hey, that's for me. But I was wrong. It was not for me. It was for the other person, so I had to keep on waiting, and I had to keep on listening to all the other customers go blah, 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 and they did. They surely did. They just went on and on and on and on. We're headed off to a house two minutes from here, one mile. It's a leave at the door. And now you get to hear my my southern drawl for the next two minutes as we mosey on down to this house in order to deliver this Starbucks order. Don't y'all worry your heads about it though because it's going to be a nice pleasant trip and I'm sure you're all going to have a fantastic time hearing all about the delivery process. I have the Starbucks bag in my delivery box and of course if you're interested 
in purchasing a delivery box similar to what I'm using you can find it in the description below of this video and just click on the link and it will take you over to Amazon where you can purchase a beautiful delivery box like the one I'm using to deliver this Starbucks order and believe me you're gonna love it it is an absolutely fabulous delivery box I must say I absolutely must say it it's got netting in the front it's got pockets on the side it's collapsible it's expandable you can put all kinds of things inside it like food drinks whatever your heart desires that fits inside the box will safely be stored away so you can safely deliver your orders to the customer I'm now making a right hand turn into the community. I do have my blinker on. The house is going to be on the left hand side. I got to make sure the cross traffic doesn't hit my car. I see the drop off. I'm going to make my usual, my usual U-turn here. Leave him at the door. All right, here we go. The time, <clears throat> excuse me, the time is 11.11 11 a.m. And I got a little something from our good friends at DoorDash. And uh, we're going to be headed off to uh, Little Caesars. And I'm going to be getting $6.50 for 3.2 miles. Order wasn't ready. I was in there for about five minutes waiting for the customer's name to pop up on the display screen so I could enter the code and get the, uh, the order. So, uh, it, it uh, finally popped up. The guy finally brought, put, shoved it into the box, and I entered the code. And then uh, I just had to make sure all the sauces were there because it was flashing on my phone that sauces are frequently missing from the order. So I counted the sauce. I didn't look in the bag. I just felt the, the like there was like a plastic bag in the uh, that had three items in it. That I could feel. But I'm like, I'm not opening up the bag to make sure that they're exact ones. But at least I know that there are two sauces and one larger container, which I think is like a, like a crazy sauce or something like that. And uh, we're headed off now to, oh, I don't want to hit this guy on a bicycle. Let me get over. Everybody's in a fitness mood right now because the weather's so nice. It's a comfortable 95 degrees right now. People love to exercise when it's nice and cool. Anything under 100 degrees is considered to be pleasant here in Vegas. Four minute drive, 1.9 miles. Leave at my door. No ring, please. And all exclamation points. Oh boy. So it's been really slow today. Extremely slow. And uh, I'll still probably just keep the app on until 2 o'clock. What is this guy doing? <laughs> he thought he could make a right turn. He was just, he was just pulling over into the, the, um, the parking spot where the bus parks. <laughs> and he thought he could make a right turn there. Now I got these guys on Harley Davidson's in front of me. Out for a good time. Oh shoot, this lane's going to end. I need to get over one more. Oh, yeah, yeah. All you people out and about going crazy. And let's see. Uh, 
I got the food in the trunk. I put the pizza in a pizza bag. And then I didn't know whether or not to put the um, sauces in the pizza bag because I don't know if they're supposed to stay hot or cold. So I put them in a separate bag in the trunk. So, but I'll, I won't forget them because they're, I can visually see the bag when I open the trunk of the car that they're, you know, they're there. So I'm not worried about forgetting the sauces. I'm just, uh, I just, I didn't know if the app was going to tell me to take a picture of the pizza bag at random. The app DoorDash will say, take a picture of your pizza bag to prove that you're, that you're doing your job and putting the pizza in a pizza pizza bag so just out of reflex I always put the pizzas in there and then wait to see if the app tells me to take a picture of the bag but it did not it did not say a word and um, I've just been at home watching that show that um, called from and uh, just trying to just uh, see what happens I'm still on season one and I guess Season 2 is going to disappear by the end of this month. So I only got about, what, 7 more days, 8 more days to watch it before it disappears. So I want to make sure I I finish it uh, by the end of the week. So it's something at least to have on while I'm waiting for orders. So I'm just kind of hanging out at home watching the, the show you know, rejecting offers because everything's terrible or, or there's no offers coming in at all. And um, I'm kind of surprised that it's slow today because it is Monday. Usually Mondays are busy. And uh, yesterday was good. I worked yesterday and then Saturday was kind of slow and Friday was really slow. Friday was deader than a doornail. All right, I'm coming up on the turn here turning into the neighborhood traffic is flowing really well today no problems I think it's gonna be a house on the right I gotta make a right hand turn coming up yep it's this next turn here I'm turning I think it's this house on the corner I think I've been here but yep Order, I've been here many times. They added the following instructions. Yeah, the following instructions. Leave at my door. Leave at my no door. Ring, no ring, please. The time is 11.54 a.m. and I got a little order from DoorDash. I'm going to be getting $45.73 for 19 miles and I just have to go to Petco and deliver five different orders. Okay, I got all of the dog food loaded in the car. It's it's a big heavy load. I have uh, two uh, I don't know. They're like 45 pound or 50 pound bags in the trunk. I've got about a 35 pound bag in the rear passenger seat and then I've got about two 25 pound bags behind me on the driver's side in the back. But everything's organized where I'm not going to have to like um, juggle the, the big heavy bags to find stuff. So everybody's bag is cl clearly labeled and easily accessible. The first delivery is 10 minutes from here, 3.7 miles. It's going to be a house and as usual, it's going to be one of those ones where I get no gate codes to any of the drop-offs. 
and I'm gonna just have to hope that I go to all of I go to all these places where I have gate codes and I'm not gonna have any type of uh, you know problems to get into the communities so hopefully it all just works out really good I can only hope I mean the good news is that all the items that they gave me were reasonable items nothing was a uh, nothing was something that I was very stressed about receiving I think the only problem is going to be if any of these orders involve carrying the carrying the bags to the uh, you know to like a second or third floor apartment that's where it's going to get a little bit tricky because these bags are so darn heavy that um, that I'm gonna pretty much be you know drenched in sweat and probably hurt myself because <laughs> um, yeah didn't I didn't I already tell you guys that I hurt my shoulder doing some delivering yeah I think I did so so yeah so there's already been some um, problems that I've had because I I accepted orders that were uh, really heavy so um, I'm just hoping I don't I don't um, you know re-injure myself and uh, it's just this right shoulder here and it's also not just from um, carrying heavy cases of water it's the repetition of always reaching to the camera that I'm filming on right now to turn it on and to turn it off because I've got a lean forward stretch to reach the camera over and over again and that's one of the reasons why I decided to do the format where when I'm do in the midst of delivery to set it up more so where it's like a live stream so I'm not constantly lunging forward to turn the camera on and off so since I'm in an active delivery the camera just stays on and then you guys, if you get bored, <laughs> if you get tired and you just feel like, well, nothing's happening. Why is nothing happening? Well, just go ahead and um, skip forward. I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, let's see. What can I tell you that's new? Oh, I went to uh, Sam's Club and I got new tires while I was sick and not doing um, videos because I was trying to recover I decided to check the uh, status of the treads of my tire and um, of course guess what I found yeah that's right I saw that the tires were due to be replaced the um, I have a tire a tire what is it called a tire thread gauge or is it thread you know tire tread gauge that's what it is I have a tire tread gauge and so that tells you when your treads are low on your tires and sure enough it was in the yellow zone and uh, I never like to take any chances when it comes to um, tires especially on these roads with these crazy drivers where you've got to slam your brakes on at the last minute to survive oh god look at this guy up the front he better go I hate when people at the last minute realize, oh, I don't need to make a left, I need to make a right, and then they block all the traffic. Oh, he's gone. And so I went over to uh, Sam's and I got tires, and it was my first time getting tires at um, Sam's Club. I normally would go to Costco to get them. And Costco would normally have me wait about two hours. I'd sit there in the, in the um, food court and I'd wait for the tires to be done. But I decided this time I'm gonna give Sam's Club a try. And you know what? It was, the, the experience was so much better than Costco. The, um, they helped me, uh, first of all, they actually had me make an appointment that they actually stuck to when I showed up. And I showed up like 15 minutes early. And they took care of my tires right away. And so I was there for only about an hour only about an hour and they, they swapped the tires out so I was very happy with the, the service and then they had a special a hundred dollars off so I got all three tires I mean all four tires for a little over three hundred dollars which is a total steal 
considering these times that we're living in where inflation is through the roof. So I was very happy. And they're name brand tires. I got Goodyear tires. They're not like cheap, you know, Kirkland tires or something. You know what I'm saying? They're not junky. So uh, I was very happy with that. And now I don't have to worry about getting tires again for a really long time. Uh, because I don't really drive as much as I used to. I'm really only putting on about, oh, I don't know. Maybe about a thousand miles a month, a little over that. Whereas before I was doing two to three thousand miles a month on the car in the past, like way in the past. So yeah, so that was new. So the so I feel very safe having the new tires and then um uh I think that's about it. I don't think there's anything else that happened that you got oh I got my new crown put in for my teeth. And, of course, when they put it in, they um, <laughs> they left cement, a little bit of cement in the back of the tooth, which is still there now. But it's not super obnoxious, and I probably should have said something, but I was already in so much pain from them jiggling around back there. Because, um, you know, they first they file the, the, the tooth down so that it'll fit the crown. And when they do that the root is so close to being exposed that just touching the the um the remainder of the tooth is very sensitive so when they were kept just fiddling around in there and they always take so long to finally put the tooth in they've got to test it they got to take it on they got to take it off you know before they put the final glue on so anyway my mouth my that area right here is still so sore from what they did and it's our it's it's been three days now since they've done it and it's still bothering me i mean it's not like i have a toothache it just feels sensitive so i don't even want to chew on that side or anything i just kind of want to leave it alone Ugh, so many things happened this past week let me tell you it's just crazy how many situations i had to deal with it wasn't even funny but that's just the way life is you know Stuff comes in clusters. I can go weeks and weeks where I'm just doing my job, my little, my little delivery job, having a good old time, and then all of a sudden, like a big, like a big cluster F, it all comes in, just hits like like dynamite, left and right, left and right, nothing but um, emergency situations. But. Um, Anyway, things have things have settled down now, and that's why I'm, I'm recording video again. Okay, I've got three more minutes. Uh, I believe this is a gated community, and of course, I don't have a gate code, so I don't know what's going to happen. I may have something in my in my Google Maps or something that may be helpful. Let me open up my Google Maps. All right, just a quarter more of a mile, and I'm gonna make a left turn into the community for the first drop off. I think every single customer just has one item I need to drop off, and it weighs anywhere between 25 pounds and 50 pounds is what I'm dropping off, so you know it's heavy. Oh, I thought I was turning into a community. I still got a little bit more to go. Oh, it's not in a gated community. Oh, thank goodness. I can see on the map where it is, and that particular area is not gated. Watch out, lady. I'm turning. Thank you for uh, crossing the street in time. Let's see. Which customer is this? Okay. It starts with an M. I won't tell you the rest of the name because that wouldn't be appropriate. And we're up here in Seven Hills, and... Uh, they're doing construction up here. It's a bit of a mess. It's just a single lane access right now. Temperatures 94 degrees. I'm glad this is going to be a house drop off, which means it's going to be a. Um... Oh, there's a gate. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been here before. Let me look at my. Let me look at my uh, secret files here. Gosh darn it! I thought I was safe. All right, let's see what we got. Oh gosh. Oh, I might have something. Let me give it a. Let me give it a whirl. Ooh. 
Well, what do you know? Miracles happen. Miracle on 49th Street. Is that what it's called? Miracle on 40. Miracle on 42nd Street. I don't know. Remember that movie? It's an old black and white movie. It's like Christmas related, or was it about religious related? Oh, she was asking if there was a Santa Claus or something. Miracle on 34th Street. Is that it? Coming around the bend here, we're pretty much set now that I'm inside. Thank God for those coats. I haven't been storing very many coats lately, so I'm bound to hit a problem eventually. I just kind of got tired of entering them. So I spent, I've been spending almost five years just putting backups for things. Let's see, I think it's going to be over here on the right. Let me make sure I get the right address. It's gonna be on the left. I see the house. That's good news. I can't film for you guys because the bag is gonna be so heavy that I need both hands. So I can show you the bag once I get out of the car. The first drop off was super easy and it was the lightest of all the deliveries so it was not bad. And the next one coming up is 12 minutes from here, 5.5 miles. And then so there's just four more deliveries to go. One down, four more to go. All these people are really far from each other. I'm hoping the last one isn't gonna be super far from home, but that's usually the case. It starts me off as the closest one from the, from the store and then takes me further and further away. Now I looked on the, uh, on the app before I accepted the offer to make sure that the, um, that this, these deliveries weren't going to take me to the strip or any place where I didn't want to go. So everything checked out that um, it was going to be in areas that I'm comfortable delivering in. So the only, of course, the only question, like I said before, was, is there going to be an apartment? That I don't know. But at least I know wherever I'm going, they're not going to be areas that I don't want to go as far as being depressing or you know <laughs> places that look like a war zone nothing like that so it all should be pretty pleasant and uh let's see right now i'm going through grand hills which is pretty it's like a racetrack of beautiful homes and foliage and foliage I'm glad this came in though because I, I wasn't getting any work and so this is going to help me to hit my goal. I was trying to make $60 today so this easily gets me over that goal. So I'm, That's why I took it. At, at first I was like, I'm not doing any shopping today. I'm not in any mood. I'm just going to do restaurants and stuff like that. But when the number, when I saw those numbers, I'm like, well, hell, that's a good chunk of change. I better not reject it. It meets the criteria of two dollars a mile, and it's it's a it's a good chunk of change. So I'm like, just take it. So I did. And uh, I'm, the other part that I liked was that it's not like Albertsons, you know, or Vons, where I got to push a shopping cart through the, uh, you know, through the through the aisles at the grocery store, you know, and way way produce and all that baloney or pick up giant cases of water it's the cases of water that i really can't stand those things are so heavy i mean even though these uh bags of dog food are heavy they're they are um i don't know why but the weight just feels so much kinder to the body maybe because there's like air in the bag and how it like distributes around when you pick up the bag i'm not exactly sure but when you pick up a case of water, it is like picking up like a, a, a giant weight at the gym. Just a solid mass of, of matter that you're picking up. And you're just grabbing it by this flimsy plastic on the left and right side that could tear at any moment. So all the weight 
from the bottled waters are going into your hands and then your wrists. Whereas the other one, it's like you're just picking up a big baby. So I think that's partly why it doesn't feel as terrible to pick up a 50 pound bag of dog food as opposed to a, I don't know how heavy those cases of water. <laughs> they are freaking heavy. They are heavy. And when they slide around in the trunk, if you get like a whole bunch of them, they're like a death trap. You're so worried they're gonna slide forward to hit you in the back of the head if you have to break suddenly. Okay, let's see. We are going up deeper into Anthem. I have just regular temperature water in my thermos and I can still feel sensitivity on my tooth. Even though the water isn't ice cold, it still causes, um, gosh darn it, this wire for this microphone. I should have got a, well, I thought about getting a wireless microphone, but I'm too cheap to, to be, I'm too um, lazy to keep remembering to charge it. So I just have my wired microphone. <sighs> I've had bad experience with my dental crowns. And every time I, I eat or brush my teeth, I'm so paranoid that one of the crowns is gonna come loose and I'm gonna swallow it, or it's gonna, or when I'm brushing my teeth, it's gonna fall down the drain of the sink. And I have like a little strain, like a strainer uh, in the bathroom sink. So in case it does ever happen, it will catch it and it won't go down the drain. Cause if you lose one of your crowns, that is, that is a lot of money. That is like a thousand dollars that you're you're either swallowing or it's going down the drain. So you, so I'm really paranoid about it. In fact, I think I'm too paranoid about it. Just drinking the water, like I can feel myself checking, like are oh, are my teeth still there? <laughs> oh man. So the next one we're dropping off is for a, a customer's name that starts with the letter S. So uh, I think hers is in the passenger seat in the back, and I think that's a heavy bag. Oh no, that's not her, that's somebody else. She might be in the trunk. Both bags in the trunk are like 50 pounds. They're the massive ones. So I think that's what I, unless, unless it's the one directly, but there's still one more small one behind me. So that might be this next customer, I just don't know. I couldn't remember all the names. All I know is that none of the names sound super similar. So I knew, I know that I when I see a name, because when they when Petco writes the names on the bag, sometimes they write them in handwriting. So you're like trying to figure out like, is this the right person? You know, they don't have a, com a computer generate the labels. It's not printed on a computer. So sometimes they, when they do their spelling, even though they do spell it correct, you know, they have bad penmanship. So it's a little bit hard to um, make out what the heck they wrote on the label. I show you, but then you'd see the customer's name. But, um, oh, yeah, maybe in the previous video, maybe you got a little glimpse. Remember, I was showing bags earlier for the previous drop-off. So you could see how I laid the... Um, I laid the seats down, the back seats. I laid them flat, so I had lots of room to put different different bags of dog food uh, behind me, and I could still see what was, um, I could easily still see what I was dealing with, so I don't have to worry like, oh, let me shuffle, let me just shuffle through these 50 pound, pe pound bags of dog food to find the right person. Oh man, that reminds me of when I used to do Amazon. That's what it was like. It was a nightmare. This car was filled to the ceiling with Amazon boxes. And you'd have to sort them in order of the delivery. So the, all the bottom ones would be the last ones you deliver. All the ones on the top would be the first ones you deliver. And you had to make sure you sorted it right. Because if you didn't, you'd be, you'd be trying to sort them at the actual drop-off location. And everyone in the neighborhood would be wondering why is this amazon driver putting all of his boxes out here on the street or on the curb 
<laughs> they wouldn't understand what you were doing. They were like, what's going on? He must be lost. Oh, man, I'm glad those days are over. I would never do that job again. All you people out there that do the Amazon delivery, I give you props. That job is as as is as terrible as it gets. That is a painful job. That job, you sweat all day. Everybody, everybody just expects you just to just deliver it no matter what. There's every once in a blue moon, maybe you'll find a nice to, a nice person that will um, leave some snacks at the door for you. But as far as tips go, you have like a, a zero 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 point one percent chance of anybody giving you a tip. Most of them won't even give you a customer review because they just think of you as like the mailman. Or a UPS driver. They're like, yeah, just do your job. Bring me my crap. At least with this job, it's a little bit more, you know, like a traditional, like a waiter or waitress job where they appreciate your um, service and they put tips in the app to get, you know, to get their stuff in advance. Amazon, no. Everybody's like, I'm Amazon Prime. <laughs> I'm a Prime member. Why should I have to tip you? I pay Amazon for free delivery. It's a whole different concept. Uh, I think where I'm going next, there is no gate. As I get closer now, that's what it's looking like. I am still, I'm about a minute more away from the drop off. Oh God, it's a contactless delivery. The, I wonder why the other one didn't say that. The other, the other, the previous drop off, it didn't say it was a contactless delivery. But um, I don't know why it didn't. It was just the, it was, it showed me the same menu system, like, uh, you know, take a picture and then type where you left it. And uh, that's kind of like a contactless, but in a normal contactless, it tells you, call the customer blah 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 <laughs> and in the previous one it did not it just said take a picture and then type in where you left it all right getting closer let's see it wants me to turn here but this is an alley so that would not make sense so i'm going to turn here where it makes sense to turn oh this is not the street Oh, great. Ay, ay, ay. Now we're lost. This is the best part. Now we're lost. Let's go back to the previous street. Maybe that was the street. Because the street it wanted me to turn on. This isn't a street. Oh, man. And th that's not the street either. Oh, boy. All right, now we're in trouble. I have to pull over and um, figure out what to do. Maybe it's need to go further down. Maybe it's further down. I'm gonna just cruise around the area, try to get close to where the pin is, but I didn't see the street name. Let's see, this says one way. I'm gonna go up this way and see what happens oh it wanted me to go up that way but then it said to um oh gosh how crazy because i did when i looked at the street sign it didn't say that name it said a totally different name for the street so i was like well i'm not gonna go that way let's see what happens if i go this away if I see the name of the street. Oh, they have the, sh the name of the street on this side. How bizarre. Oh, okay. Boy, was I confused. I was like, what the heck is going on? Oh, I see what it wanted. It wanted me to cut through that alleyway. Oh, it wanted me to cut through the alleyway. So that still wasn't, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm looking for the number. I'm looking for the number. Here it is. Contactless delivery. 
I got the instructions. Let me let me call them. Hello? Hello? Oh, nobody's home. Oh, well. All right. Okay, let's get this going. All right, that delivery was successful, but I did have a problem with the app. And the problem was <laughs> that after I uploaded the picture and tried to close it out, some weird menu came out saying, make sure you deliver to the right customer. And I'm like, it's too late. I've already del <laughs> delivered it and it is the right customer. And then it froze. There was no button. So I had to just close the app out and reopen it. And then that awful menu disappeared. And then it showed me the next customer that we're going to, which is only um, three minutes from here, 1.2 miles. I know you go first. You don't have a stop sign. It's okay, calm down. And this customer starts with a C, the letter C, and I won't tell you what that stands for. <laughs> I don't wanna offend you. Uh, let's see. Um, it's another contactless delivery. We're doing good on time. It's 12.32. We've done our second one. This is our third. So after I drop this one off, there's just going to be two more to go. And I don't know how many miles we've done so far, but I highly doubt we're even close to, have, to, to having accomplished the 19 miles that's required to complete this order. Because I only have 28 miles on the car right now. So that tells me I still have quite quite a long drive to go. I'm sure the last one's going to be a, a killer as far as how far it is. All right, I'm coming up now to Bicentennial Way where all the cars drive like Looney Tunes. Are you going to go or am I going to go? Are you going to go or am I going to go? One of us is going to go. One of us is, I guess now finally it's my turn because you took so damn long. Because you weren't paying attention, you're playing with your damn phone. You didn't know who was first. That's right. That's usually what happens. You get to the stop, you get to your stop sign and you start looking at your phone. And you're like, oh, is it my turn to go? Is it my turn? <laughs> oh man, I'm glad this next one is close by. And it looks like it's going to be another house, thank goodness. I hope all you guys out that do your delivery driving, I hope you guys are having a good day and making lots of money. If it wasn't for this order, I would say this was a crap of a day, but it did come in. Like a lottery ticket. This was my lot. Oh, cross traffic does not stop. This was my lottery ticket offer. It put me over, over the top. Without this offer, I bet you I would have only made about maybe $30 today and I would have turned the app off. And of course, you guys know this is the last delivery. I mean, the, you know, the last offer of the day. I'm not doing any more after this because I already hit my goal. And that's it. <laughs> I don't want to do no more because, you know, when you have to lift all these heavy bags of dog food, it wears you out. Anything heavy. I mean, if... If you just, if this was my only delivery of the day, after I finished doing it, I would just want to go home because you know you're all sweaty, you're tired, you're out of breath. Oh God, is it another one inside of a gate? Oh, please tell me I turn right here. Yes, thank you. This particular gate in front of me that I'm not going to, by the way, but if I was, there is no code for that one. You have to wait for the customer to let you in. Oh, that wasn't it. So it's going to be coming up on the left. Uh, let's see. I'm going to turn around. Uh, yeah, I see it. I just got to turn around. Oh, at least it's quiet up here. All right, here we are. Exit. All right, complete the delivery. Yeah, uh-huh, hold on. Dialing. 
Oh, no. <laughs> Boy, that went through fast. All right, let's do it. Okay, that was the heaviest. Oh my God, that was the heaviest of the bags, I think. I'm pretty sure. Okay, he's turning that way or going right. Okay, good, I'm going left. Oh man, that bag was heavy. Two more deliveries to go. 12 minutes from here. Boy, what is 12 minutes from here? Maybe we're circling back. I don't know. No, we're not. We're going further and further deeper into Anthem. Even further. I didn't even know you can go even further from home than here. We're going 12 minutes. 5.6 miles. Oh, thank God I got a stop sign. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Why am I going? Does that, does that guy have a stop sign? That's what I don't like about this area. It has a... It, most places when you come to a stop sign at an intersection it's a four-way stop not in this area most of them are just two-way stops so you have to really look before you go like look for the other person's stop sign or look for uh, those yellow rectangular signs that say cross traffic does not stop <laughs> Oh man, I am so far north, all there is up here is mountains. Oh man, they must get a lot of coyotes that come down here. It would not be safe to own a cat down here, or at least not an outdoor cat. Because with all the wildlife out here, it would get eaten up in two seconds. Alright, where are you having me go now? Wait a second. Why are you having me go this way? Oh well. It wants me to go, it wants me to, it had me go north, then get on this road, and now it wants me to go south. It must just be faster time-wise, but I think miles-wise, I think it's longer to have me do what it's saying. It should have really had me just go back to, to Bicentennial Parkway, but instead I'm up here on Democracy. If you guys are from Vegas, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know Democracy. It's the, the road that time forgot. It's at the very outer rim. All right, I'm making a left here. I still got 4.7 more miles to go. Oh, man. Well, at least you guys can enjoy a nice long video. See, if it wasn't for this delivery, the video would have been really short today. Okay, I got the light, let's go. Current temperature, 94 degrees. I've driven now 30.8 miles. Currently getting about 56 miles to the gallon because of all of the um, uphill that I've been, you know, I've been driving uphill a lot to come up here. So that causes the um, mileage to go down. But the moment I start heading back towards home, it's all downhill, and then I gain it all back. So it all works out. And then the, it, it goes back up close to 60 miles per gallon. There was an old guy I saw the other day. Uh, he was doing delivery, but in one of those, in a huge white pickup truck, you know, one of those big diesel ones. I, for the, I can't figure out, like, why, why are you doing this type of work in that kind of car and he's just picking up like a mcdonald's order or whatever i'm sure just about half of the money he earned that day all went to gas because <laughs> those things burn up a lot they probably only get like 15 miles to the gallon it's like every time he did a delivery it was costing him like four dollars so every time he tried to make let's say he made ten dollars well four of it went to gas and then he pockets six not to mention the cost of his tires. You know, those big trucks, those tires don't don't last very long. And uh, the cost to replace a, a a tire, a truck on a a tire on a truck is really expensive. It's double of what it costs for this car. This car is just a little baby toy car, so it goes it goes a long way. Oh God! I next stop is going to be Anthem Country Club. <sighs> Well, at least it's still there's not a gate. It's just a guard. I'm getting out my wallet and I'm getting my ID ready. 
So that way the guard doesn't have to wait on me to hand him the ID. You know, if if I would have known this is where I was going, I wouldn't have gone this way. I think this was a longer way to go. I think I knew a shorter a, a shorter route than what this stupid app is taking me in, but I was not I'm not in the mood to play like play navigation override right now. I just kind of want to just do what it says, be on autopilot, just get it done. So I think we're at um second to last one. This customer's name starts with the letter C. She, her name is the same as a famous 1980s um, singer, but you wouldn't know this singer. <laughs> this is one of those oddball singers from my high school days. I won't tell you, I won't tell you the um, like some of the songs because then maybe you'll know who I'm talking about. But oh, it's called you know that music is called freestyle music. It's that type of artist, you know. One of those weird people, and the music is all ding 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 ding. ding you know that kind of music <laughs> where everything kind of sounds the same because their voices are kind of synthesized, but you know it's all music you can dance to. It's like '80s. 80s dance music back in my day oh there's an ambulance oh he's on the other side of the concrete what am I doing why am I breaking I got nothing to worry about I was breaking for no reason you know now they call that music freestyle music but it wasn't called freestyle music in the at the time they didn't really even have a name for it back then. Some people called it cha-cha music. Some people called it disco. Uh, some people called it techno. Nobody knew what to call it. But it, it had kind of a electronic Latin flavor. A lot of the big artists were Latin, Latino. And it was real big on the West Coast, these artists. Uh, one of the biggest mainstream stream ones was Expose, and they're famous nationally. But it, almost all the other ones, nobody knows who they are. They're like, I've never heard of that artist. I'm like, yeah, it's all West Coast stuff. It never traveled across the country. But um, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Why did I get on this tangent about freestyle music? Oh, yeah. So the heaviest bag I just delivered, the one I was huffing and puffing about earlier. Let me get some water. I got a half a mile to the turn. Oh man, I hope they left their, the left a note at the guard gate that they have a delivery. Sometimes when they do these pet code deliveries, they forget, and then I'm just they they say I can't deliver it. And then I'm like, great, what am I supposed to do now? And I gotta call them, I gotta park, it's a mess. Quarter mile till the turn. Coming up on the red light. They still haven't torn out all this grass yet. They got all this grass still that they're so that the law. The state has told everybody they have to tear out all this grass. Oh man, look at all the cars at the guard gate. Oh man. And I think there's just a single, yeah, it's a single lane. Now I'm stuck. And I still got 0.9 miles to go until I reach the, um, I'm not moving forward guy. There's a thing in front of me, it looks like it would um, have a horse in it, like a horse trailer. But it doesn't have a horse. It says on the back, affordable piano movers. So the, so this trailer that they're hauling is designed to, to transport horses. And they're using it to transport... <laughs> they're using it to transport pianos. And obviously, when they use it to transport the piano, because of the way, you know, it's a trailer for horses. So it's narrow and tall. So that means they have to turn the piano on its side. 
in order to, to, to move it. That can't be good for the piano. No wonder it's called affordable piano movers because it must be cheap and people don't care if their piano gets damaged. They just want it moved. And it looks like there's a piano currently in the trailer. I can see, um, I can see packaging material at the top. And I think there's like a red label at the top. I don't know why people get pianos. I think it's a lady thing. I think women love pianos. I don't know if it's... I've never heard of... I'm sure there is, but I've never really heard of a guy who said he had to absolutely have a piano. I mean, unless he was a professional piano player. But so many women love pianos just to have as a presentation piece in their uh, formal living room. It makes them feel like they are, like, rich, I guess. It gives them that, like, ooh, look at me. I'm artistic. <laughs> so, good for them. If they got the money and the space, go go for it, I say. And it's a generational thing. My generation, I'm Gen X, and I don't think any of us care about pianos. But I think that the generation... What's the generation above Generation X? Is it the baby boomers? I think they care about pianos. And then the, the silent generation. Have you guys heard of the silent generation? That's the one that comes above that most people never talk about. They like pianos too. And I think that's it. People in World War II, like the, the, um, the greatest generation, there's not that many left. But they didn't care about pianos. They were very frugal and very practical. Because back then, everybody's house was tiny. Because, you know, the war, World War II... Uh, materials were limited and then when they came back from the war the government offered them all of these little tiny bungalows <laughs> oh man the the guy to the right I mean the the lane to my right was closed while I was talking to you guys and I was just not paying attention but he opened up the lane and I should have got over to my right to keep going but it's too late now all the other cars poured to the right so now they're all cutting in front of me this is the downside about making videos, you know? They take, they take away my focus from doing the job to maximizing my potential. That's, what I, that's the part of, the, of doing the videos I don't like, is um, it, they, they slow me up. And so sometimes I'm just like, you know what, I'm not doing any damn videos today because they're just messing with my money. But, um, you know, I know people enjoy them, so. I'm going to try to do them as when, you know, whenever I can. All right, I'm coming. It's almost my turn. I'm next. This p the piano guy's getting his license, his license checked, and they're going to look at his license plate in a second. And then I'm going to turn the camera off, and then I'll be next. Come on, guy. Oh, this lady's walking so slow. You know, she's just like so sick of this job. Okay, I made it through. I couldn't show you the person because, you know, you got to tell the customer's name and all that private information, you know. So I turned the camera off and I was on the list, so that's good news. So I didn't have any problem um, entering. And it's 12.52 a.m., so... I got an hour left to deliver this package and the other one, so I should be good. I mean, I should be done before 2 o'clock, so... Oh my god, there's a landscaper in front of me going so slow, and this is a single lane, and they have signs in here that says, Do not pass anyone. Even though he's on the shoulder driving really slow, I'm not allowed to pass him. So he's going 20 miles an hour in a 25 mile an hour zone. Now I'm going 18 miles an hour. Please, God, turn. Make him turn. Oh, he's turning. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Get out of my way. I need to go 25, 30. All right. Now I'm good. Now I'm rolling again. I don't know if this uh, particular house is going to be inside of a gated community or a gated neighborhood inside this community. So they gave me a pass, but lately... Like a pass with the barcode on it. But lately they've been giving out passes to everybody. It doesn't matter where, where I'm dropping off. They hand you a pass with the barcode. So I don't, that, I don't know if this is gated or not. Okay, I'm making a right. 
this neighborhood so far so far gateless so far i'm gateless um only a quarter of a mile to go i want to say there's no gate but i'm not going to say that yet until i can see the whites of their eyes and uh, where am i it's like the last it's like the last house on the right what's that number god how ah, these roads are narrow Okay, let's see here. Uh, no gate, no gate. We're good. Complete delivery steps. It's like it's telling me that you're not in the right place. It's like, no, I'm in the right place. Bad GPS. Continue. I received the instructions. I received the instructions. Uh-huh, I received it all right. Okay, here I go. Okay, so that was a light bag, so I was able to record. This next one, and it's the last one, is inside of Anthem Country Club. So we can either be really happy because it's in here, and I don't have to go very far, and the drop-off will be simple because it's a house. So those are all the pluses. Now let's talk about the negatives. I don't have a uh, a special code if there's a gate you see the guard has no idea that i'm going to multiple addresses and neither did i <laughs> so the guard thought well he's only going to this address that he told me so i don't need to give him anything else and that's what i thought too so now i'm driving 1.3 miles just to find out whether or not I'm going to need to go all the way back to the exit and enter back into the con go all the way around and go back into the complex to go talk to the guard again and get the pass that will let me into the gated neighborhood that's inside of here. So I'm going to either be really happy in the next three minutes or I'm going to be so effing pissed. So two more minutes until this day is over. Or it could be another 20 minutes until this day is over because of the uh, of because of what I'm going to have to do to get inside. Now, I guess I could try calling the customer and maybe they'll open the gate for me, tell them. But they're just going to say the guard should have given you a pass. That's what they would tell me. They're going to be, we can't let you in. There's no code to enter. You need the, the special barcode at the main gate. So, man, that'll be a bummer. Oh, please don't let this happen. <laughs> I beg of you. Please just let me in. I mean, maybe I'll just leave it. No, I can't do that. I was like, maybe I'll just leave it at the gate. But no, you can't do that. Or I could just sit there and, and hope somebody comes comes in behind me. And then, and then uh, but these, you know, when this community, when they have a gate, it's usually just a, a gate for like a house like about six or ten houses so the odds that someone's going to be turning into that community is really small all right i'm in the next neighborhood of anthem country club and so far no gate half a mile to go and there's a white truck behind me trying to tailgate me even though i'm going the speed limit and of course it's a gardener because they're probably late and they want to go home. All right, I'm making a left coming up and it looks like there's no gate, so I look like I'm going to be good. And this stupid guy is still following me. <laughs> it's like, why do we all have to be going to the same damn place? What's the number? Okay. This was the last one, Lord. The last one. And it's for the furthest away. 
This is as deep into Anthem Country Club as you can get. You can't even get it. I can see the mountain. I can see there's the dead mountain ahead of me. Oh, wow. I think it's going to be on the right-hand side. You make sure you get the right address again. That white truck is still behind me. I guess if I was polite, I would just pull over. But I guess I'm not polite. <laughs> I guess I'm not polite at all. I'm just gonna make him suffer like they make me suffer. Alright, I think it's this one. Yep, this is it. Contactless delivery. Contactless delivery. Contactless. I wanna be in the shade. I've had a day. Ooh, <laughs> I hit a rock. <laughs> All right, it's all delivered. It was another heavy bag, a super long driveway. Oh my God, but it's all done. It's a 104 p.m. and I'm done. So I'm very happy that I finished before two and I hit my goal and uh, yeah, but I don't know, how many hours was that? I started at 8. How many hours online was I at? Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I guess I was online for 5 hours total. But I watched a lot of TV at home. So I don't think it was a bad day as far as um, work. It was mostly just a day of just, a, just babysitting that app and waiting for something decent to come in as I watched you know stuff on um, Amazon Prime so not a bad day I mean the main thing is that you know the goal was accomplished within the allotted time and I actually finished early so that's that's really what what matters and uh, and yeah so this is gonna wrap everything up for the for this video thanks once again for uh, watching and i hope you enjoy the uh live stream style of today's video because that's all <laughs> that's all you're going to be getting for a while until my till my shoulder feels better and i can easily turn the camera on and off and also you know i don't want to have to spend a lot of time just sitting in front of the computer editing so this also helps so thanks again everybody i will see you again tomorrow on tuesday as I continue my journey to reach my goal of $420 for the week. Take care. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.